Brad at MJB. Let's jump straight in. So here we are, boring uh, cast iron housing. This is for a roots blower again. And this one, the bearing had spun and made the bore oversize. We're using a wall hook to UPA for facing head. Taking about 12 foul depth for cut. That's the facing head there. And unfortunately it wasn't holding tolerance very well. So we decided to strip it and give it a clean. And we've done some more cuts and it's now holding half a foul easily. So the next job was to turn a cast iron sleeve to press into this now oversized bore. We only had a bit of one inch cord stock. So it's going to take a fair bit of machining. We need a 125 mil ID. This is a 50 foul depth of cut, so 100 foul off diameter, and we're using the Sanvik 7525 CBN inserts for cast iron. They hold up really well, but you are limited with the depth of cut that you can take. That's the completed sleeve. The two shallow grooves you can see on the OD are to hold lock tight and that just gives a bit of extra security when we press it home. One cast iron sleeve with about 8 temps interference, two grooves for lock tight and it was a tap in with a big lump of cast iron on it, so very nice. After I'd done the initial machining on this housing, I made sure to leave the job set up in the mill. That way I could be 100% sure that after I tapped the sleeve in, that everything was in alignment and nothing had moved and we didn't have to re-clock the bore. So we're taking six foul depth of cut, so that's 12 foul off the diameter. And we had about 100 foul to come out of this sleeve to bring it up to 130 millimeters. We're using the power feed on the mill. This mill is a bed mill, so the head is actually coming down rather than the table coming up. When the DRO reaches zero, we knock the power feed off, whack it into up, and then wrap it out of the hole, and then we can do our measurements or just reset the boring head for the next cut. With the housing complete, we need to turn our attention to the matching rotor. This is a tri-lobe. It's about three foot long, cast iron, and weighs around 50 kilos. So we use the crane to lift it onto the lathe. And what we need to do is build up the bearing area as that had also been damaged. So we're here, we're making our undercut with 45 degree tool, which is standard procedure for spraying shafts. We'll make this 80 to 100 foul undersize, ready for building up with the metal spray. This is the shaft after metal spraying. You can see the powder has started peeling back on itself. This is what happens when you use a masking compound to protect areas of the shaft that you don't want the powder to adhere to. And then we start roughing down. And then once we get close to finished dimension, we let the shaft cool right down to room temperature. And here's the shaft cut to size, 70 millimeters. So the next job is another set of rotors, but this time rather than a blower, they're for a vacuum pump. And they've experienced some wear on the tips, only in certain areas. And this is us clocking it in. This is the tailstock end of the rotor and it's got a bit more run out than I would like. Just recut the soft jaws, hard for you to see. But we're now well under half a foul run out. This is a uh, 
five tenths indicator, there is zero run out. So, let's check this in. So, absolutely fuck all. That is working. This is a foul indicator. Half a foul off the tail stop centre. I think we're happy with that. Again, we're using the Sandvik CBN inserts for cast iron and only one tip on this rotor needed doing so it's a heavy interrupted cut and there's the finish nicely matched a nice continuation of the very tip there and this is masking the second rotor so on the this rotor all three tips are worn just using the ceramic anti-spatter spray again to mask the area we don't want welded Grinding the tips down to remove the bulk of the material and then putting it on the lathe, clocking in and uh, just making our cuts about 15 foul off diameter. Once the tips are done the rotors have to be matched to length again. So we're just facing them down there. And of course once the rotors are machined shorter the housing has to be machined shorter as well to match. Once again, thank you for watching my videos. If you enjoy this machining content, repairing bits and pieces, please like and subscribe. Leave us a comment if you want to know anything more about the process, the machines, the equipment we're using. For now, I'll be back at this company repairing the blowers on Friday, so it'll be another week or so until you see another video. I will leave you with the clips that we took on Saturday when we reinstalled the roll plant for the bakery and integrated it back in with the rest of the bread plant. It's quite interesting watching the dough be moulded, then into the prover and then final rolling before it goes into the baking tins. And you can see what we're doing. Again, just gonna gauge it by eye. That's pretty good. Not bad. A little bit of a big gap for welding, but there we go. That's job jobs. I've just uh, get some filler in that joint. It's not bad that way either. Let me show you. Not too sad. Just let me press that out a little bit. Again, this is just a this is just a hopper for dough. All right, so that's what the half we just folded. Here's the half I folded before. And yeah, they're pretty good. And not too shabby at all. Right. So, now we've got to weld it. That is now all one part. So, where you don't use filler, you get a hell of a lot less burn through than if you do need filler. You have to use excess heat to uh, actually melt the filler in the puddle. So that's our hopper. This will slide over the end of the conveyor, get bolted through here, and this will hang out, catch the bread, and the bread will be directed down into the molder that we fixed.